Welcome back. Thank you for staying with us. Today, Thursday, the 1st of April 2021, the Ministry of Health and Wellness received confirmation of 20 cases of COVID-19 from a batch of 126 samples. The contact tracing for these new cases is underway. Confirmation was also received of the recovery of 17 individuals diagnosed with COVID-19, bringing the total number of active cases to 122. Presently, one of the active cases is requiring critical care at the respiratory hospital. The new cases bring the total number of cases diagnosed in country to date to 4,265. The hours of the Easter curfew have left the nation split between those who agree with the temporary partial lockdown versus those who believe it is an infringement of their human rights. One of those speaking out against the curfew is the first deputy leader of the St. Lucia Labour Party, Dr. Ernest Hilaire. However, when compared to other sister nations, are his complaints warranted? Rochelle Gonzalez tells us more. St. Lucia is among a group of countries in the region that have implemented curfew restrictions for the Easter weekend. On Tuesday, March 30th, the government of St. Lucia made the official announcements which highlighted the adjustments to St. Lucia's curfew hours for the Easter weekend, Thursday, April 1st to Monday, April 5th, 2021, which are as follows. Thursday, 1st of April, from 7 p.m. to 4 a.m. Friday, 2nd of April, from 7 p.m. to 4 a.m. Saturday, 3rd of April, from 6 p.m. to 4 a.m., Sunday, 4th of April, from 3 p.m. to 4 a.m., and Monday, 5th of April, from 3 p.m. to 4 a.m. On the same day, the first deputy leader of the St. Lucia Labour Party, Dr. Ernest Hiller, reacted to this news at a press conference. His words have raised eyebrows of those who argue that his complaints are unreasonable, as St. Lucians will ultimately be allowed more leeway than citizens of sister countries. It's the weekend we know tradition is a weekend when family, people get together and families get together. If the problem is the beaches, then shut down the beaches for the weekend. If the problem is people having river lines, burn river lines. But should you deny me going to my, my mother's house on Easter Sunday? Or if I go to a house, I have to leave before 3 o'clock because the curfew starts at 3 o'clock. But why can't my family gather for our usual Easter, Easter gathering on Sunday or Monday? If the problem is the beaches, then say that nobody no access to the beaches for the weekend. We only allow in family gatherings of no more than 10 or 15 people. Say that. It's, and for me, you know, you, you have to be sensible in what you do. You have to be proactive, you have to be targeted, but you must also be sensible. Limit the gatherings if you want for family gatherings. But you cannot restrict person to 3 o'clock on Easter Sunday and Easter Monday. Personally, I, I would not support that. In Barbados on Good Friday, April 2nd, and Easter Monday, April 5th, no one is permitted to leave home between 5 a.m. and 9 p.m. In Antigua and Barbuda, beaches will be off-limits on Good Friday and Easter Monday, in keeping with the regulations under the state of emergency. Jamaica has the stiffest conditions with a 24-hour lockdown on Good Friday, Easter Sunday and Easter Monday. On Saturday, April 3rd, no one is permitted to leave home after 12 p.m. Reporting for Hot 7 News, I am Rochelle Gonzalez. The Archbishop is calling on St. Lucians to find positive ways to resolve disputes. He says gun violence is unacceptable and as Christians, we should learn to reconcile differences. Amid an increase in gun violence on island, the Archbishop of Castries, Robert Rivas, is asking St. Lucians to dig deep and find it in their hearts to forgive one another. He says that gun violence and other forms of serious crime is not the way to resolve our issues as human beings. He calls on everyone to look within themselves and pardon their fellow man as Christ would. The Christian way is to forgive. The Christian way is reconciliation, to make up. And this is a Christian country. We have Christian values. Our region is a Christian region. We have Christian values. And yet we act as people who don't know who we are and we do some of the most abominable things to one another without, without a sense of recognizing the, the dignity of each human being and the worth of each person and safeguarding and protecting the human life, which is sacred and precious. Rivas says that what is happening in St. Lucia is appalling and needs to end now. This 
woman doing her job in Grosile at the bus stand just get, got gunned down, is killed. For what? Is there not a way of dealing with our differences, with the things that challenge us, with the things that we don't like? Does it have to be resolved with a bullet and multiple bullets? And this young man who was just gunned down, does it have to happen that way? And why does he have to have all these weapons? Why does anyone have to be carrying all these weapons and investing in all these weapons? These are, these are symbols of death. Rivers maintains that violence is learned and therefore can be unlearned. 17-year-old Daniel Laura was the island's latest homicide due to gun violence. He was gunned down in Denry Tuesday night. For the Hot 7 News, Nisha Charles reporting. St. Lucia may finally see the first phase of the National Health Insurance Program as early as the end of this year. Fennel Neptune tells us more. The implementation of National Health Insurance will mark a major milestone in the island's healthcare system. Through the National Health Insurance, the government of St. Lucia aims to make healthcare more accessible to all segments of the population facilitating more inclusive health coverage. Health planner in the Ministry of Health and Wellness, Lauren James, explains the first phase of the national health insurance system will include an essential package of health services at the primary care level, get at tackling non-communicable diseases. What this will attempt to do is have persons be able to access health care when they need it, need it without thinking about Hey, do I have money to pay for this? Do I have money to pay for that? So in that way, persons can be more proactive about their health by seeking care when they need it. Um, in the first phase, we are looking at a package of services where we are targeting more or less um, chronic diseases which have been affecting the, the country at large. For example, diabetes, hypertension. We have um, the screening for, for cancer and other um, care areas. National health insurance is a means to achieve universal health coverage in St. Lucia. Universal health coverage means that all people have access to the health services they need, when they need them, without enduring any financial hardship or paying for health care out of pocket. What we envision is where persons would pay a premium every month, or whether it be every year or every month, and they would access health care and they would not have to pay out of pocket. You, normally, right now, as it stands, for example, I have an insurance, um, prim, an insurance package and I would have to pay for the service out of pocket and then claim from my insurance company. What we are looking for is to move away from that and to have the insurance companies reimburse the providers. So that is the method in which you, where you pay your premium and then whenever you need the care, you just access and don't pay. The development of national health insurance is a component of the health system strengthening project funded by the World Bank. 5.5 million US dollars secured from the World Bank funded project is dedicated to the development of the national health insurance system in St. Lucia. To view the full interview with health planner in the Ministry of Health and Wellness, Lauren James, Go to the government of St. Lucia's YouTube channel and Facebook page. Reporting from the Ministry of Health and Wellness, I am Fernand Neptune. You're watching the Hot 7 TV Nightly News. We'll be right back.